Yeah, I, I, and, and I agree. And I think the first thing that you said is, is a really important distinction that if, if you're bootstrapped, you have a lot more flexibility than if you're funded, particularly if you're funded by investors as opposed to maybe friends and family and things like that. Um, but in those bootstrapped businesses, there's uh, some businesses are considered lifestyle businesses which basically is, I just want the business to produce enough cash for me to live the way that I want to live now. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Business Lunch with Ryan Dice and me, Roland Frazier. We are happy to be here with you sharing fun things. We just finished an event and uh, a couple of people asked some really cool questions that we thought might be good podcast topics because we figured if they had them, then uh, you might have them too. Brian, you want to kick us off? Yeah. So this particular question um, was posed and, and really came down to the difference between building a business that you intend to sell versus building a business for cash flow, right? And are the two mutually exclusive? And if you're, if you're building a business and you're pulling a lot of money out of this business, because I mean, that seems to be, it's almost treated, at least out there in the media world, as two different things. Like, like there's one path where whether you raise money or not, right? You're, you're, you're putting all the money back. You're, you're constantly investing money back into the business. You're investing for growth, investing for growth, investing for growth. And then you're going to make this big payday at the end. And then the other one is you're taking money out, you're taking money out, you're taking money out. And maybe you sell one day, maybe you don't, but you're basically optimizing for today instead of optimizing for tomorrow. And the question really is, can you do both? Is there a way to balance? What do you think? And so that's the question, Roland. Can we have our cake and wait for it, eat it too? What uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Well, I would. I think for if you uh, you, it comes down to what is the path that you picked from an in, from an investor and fundraising perspective. Number one, if you went the VC route and you raised a bunch of money, then you are on a particular path, and that path you you just walk through a one way door. So if you raise money through venture capital, then it is kind of big eggs that are bust um, and creating a cash flow business is not going to be good for anybody. And so, yeah, everything's got to get reinvested and you you basically better get it generated 10x return for your investors. They're going to be miserable and that's at, at a bare minimum. So that's if you took the VC, um, took the VC check. If you didn't take the VC check and you're, and you're bootstrapped, then not only do I think you can both take money out and, and generate cash flow today and have a large exit value, I think you should. Uh, I, I mean, we have experienced this, but I think the ultimate sign uh, of a healthy business is, you know, not just a high NPS score um, or even a really large revenue uh, uh, number. I think the ultimate sign of a healthy business is that business's ability to kick out large amounts of distributable cash each and every month uh, or quarter. So yes, I think if you do want to sell, then having an ability to make big distributions is not only something you can do, I think it's something that you should do. Now, coming up with a balance so that you're not sending out so much money that there's not enough fuel for growth is definitely a balance that you need to take, keep in mind. But yes, I do think you can have both. Yeah, I, I, and, and I agree. And I think the first thing that you said is, is a really important distinction that if, if you're bootstrapped, you have a lot more flexibility than if you're funded, particularly if you're funded by investors as opposed to maybe friends and family and things like that. Um, but in those bootstrapped businesses, there's uh, some businesses are considered lifestyle businesses, which basically is I just want the business to produce enough cash for me to live the way that I want to live now. And I'm not really concerned about uh, it building significant value or even growing because I'm happy with where I am. And I don't, which, which is may sound a little anathematic, right? It's, it's, it's what you don't want to grow. You don't want to scale. Well, you, you advised somebody one time, uh, uh, a friend of ours on Facebook, I remember long ago, actually. And, um, you said, yeah, I think they were talking about uh, scaling the business to 10 million. And you said, well, before you do that, ask if you want what that brings, because it brings a whole host of different things. Uh, but that's, that's a different conversation. I think the answer 
is that you can do both. And the confusion arises out of the advice that you're given that you want to do things differently a couple years before you sell. And uh, a lot of people believe that it's mutually exclusive, that you're either building a business to sell or you're building a business uh, for cash flow and that you have to like flip that switch. Uh, but it's not completely true. There are things that you will do typically as an entrepreneur who doesn't have to answer to other investors that will minimize your taxes. Like you'll write off everything that you possibly can. You'll take maybe trips that would not be tax deductible and you'll take all of your employees to some fun place that you would otherwise have a non-tax deductible vacation. Uh, you'll maybe pay for cell phones or automobiles uh, or other expenses that the business doesn't need, or maybe you'll lease properties or things like that, that the business doesn't necessarily have to have, but they are tax deductible because they are ordinary and necessary or basically helpful to the business that reduces profitability. And because most businesses sell based as a function of profit, anything that takes the profit down is arguably something that will inhibit your ability to get a higher sales price. Now, that's typically addressed through restated financials where we go through an exercise to say, hey, over the last couple of years, what are all the things that were one-time expenses like masterminds or consults or training programs or all those family type experience uh, expenses or other things like that that will not be ongoing required expenses of the business to achieve profit going forward in the hands of the new buyer? That can also include the excess salary. Maybe you're paying yourself a million dollars a year, uh, but you could be replaced with somebody that only costs 200000 a year. We'd add that 800 back. So I don't find it to be bad to take a lot of cash out of the business. And uh, we've gone through recently in a couple of the businesses having this out with uh, high-level people that were C-suite people that we brought in because their argument was, well, you're taking money out of the business that's hurting my future potential exit value. And, uh, and the answer to that is kind of a combination between, well, what do you think we need to put that money in to do? What would we be doing that would dramatically increase the value of the company? And in this case, the answer was, well, acquisitions. You should put that money towards acquisitions. And our answer was, we don't really need money for acquisitions. We have a line of credit for $10 million and we've got uh, a, a process for identifying and, and absorbing acquisitions that don't require a lot of cash to start with in the first place. And if we were to go heavy into acquisitions, we know that more than 80% of those fail to realize their value. We could end up with a bunch of debt and a bunch of extra investors and no cash distributed and a bunch of losers. Right? So if we have a process that's continuing to add value and we don't need that cash for the business, then I think we should probably take it out. And now you may get, as you start to bring in professionals and professionalized people that say, well, you need to have a reserve and that's good, solid advice, you know, because a lot of bootstrapped entrepreneurs will pay refunds and other expenses like, you know, equipment that's depreciating. They'll just pay it out of cash flow and they won't set money aside for it. So having, some set aside makes sense. Um, and other than that, I, I, I just, I think that they are not mutually exclusive and that if you're building a solid business that is a wealth asset, you can take the money out and fund the growth that you need and add back anything you need through restated financials and you're not giving anything up in the exit and you're getting to have, you're getting to eat your cake and have it too. Yeah, funny enough, I've seen excess cash left in companies lead to bloat, which actually caused businesses to slow down, not grow. I would argue uh, I and, remember personally a couple of those things that you oh, yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ones that we owned and one in particular that I ran. So, um, so yeah, it, it is absolutely, I, I believe that we have this, this idea that, that money is fuel and it can be, it absolutely can be. But it's not always fuel. It, it's, it, I mean, it, you, a better way to think about it is it, it, sugar, right? And, and so it's sugar and 
it can be fuel for a little bit directed in the right direction, but there can also be a sugar crash. So if money and cash in a business is directed, if there's a plan for it, then absolutely positively it makes sense. If it's just left there though, it turns to fat, it turns to bloat, and it slows the business down. So what I would say is have a budget. Decide ahead of time where this cash is going to go and decide ahead of time that at least some of it is going to show up in the form of profit and that those profits are going to be distributed. Um, we we make sure we create a cash flow waterfall so that the cash, when it goes through, it it's going to flow through the excess cash. We're going to, we're going to leave a certain amount in operating. Typically it's one month is going to be in the operating account. However much one month OPEX is going to stay in that operating account. Everything over and above that is going to get swept out at the end of every month. And it's just a really healthy way of saying, okay, like this is, this business now has everything that needs to operate for the next month. That, that is going to then stay in basically kind of a, that sweep account. And out of there, we can then put it into different accounts, per, perhaps for future investment and or for distribution. The nice thing about it, if you distribute money out to, to the stakeholders, that money can always be reinvested back in. So if there's a, uh, a significant enough investment opportunity, the investors can all decide at that time to buy back in and, and the ones who believe can, can do that.